This is Joe and Tell, and today I want to talk to you guys about various ways that you can spend around $100, maybe even less, to improve your audio system. And the reason I'm doing this is because I see a lot of people that are wanting to spend more money on various things, maybe upgrading their amplifier, their AVR, maybe buying expensive cables, I don't know. Everybody's intention is to improve their audio experience or at least that's what I think it should be. So starting with number one is getting a U-Mic 1 and REW. So a U-Mic 1 is a calibrated mic. It's USB, so you don't need an audio interface or anything like that. And it's what I use to do a lot of the measurements, and I think it's great. You can go on Mini DSP's website. I have it here, and it's $79. You do have to pay for shipping, and it is more expensive if you choose to buy it from Amazon. So I would take a look here. They do have a U-Mic 2, but a lot of people still prefer the original U-Mic 1 for various reasons. I won't get into that right now. So this is something that I would recommend because you can actually start doing measurements of your speakers, uh, measurements of your room and your subwoofers and really get a good idea of what your speakers are doing. We don't really need to guess what is happening for under a hundred bucks you can just buy this and you'll be able to tell what you will need is rew so this software is actually free but i would recommend any amount that you can donate to the developer donate that because this is way worth it this piece of software is amazing they could charge a ton of money for it if they wanted to and people would pay for it the only thing about this is it does require time spent trying to learn how to use the software. It's not something that you're just gonna jump into and immediately understand what everything does. And I understand that although I do talk about REW and the U-Mic a lot, I know that some people are just, you know, they're intimidated by it. And I don't know how many people wanna admit that, you know, but it is complicated. It took me a while to learn it and still there's a ton for me to learn in this software after using it day after day for years now. So that's the first recommendation is to get REW and U-Mic. Next recommendation is of course the calibration toolkit that Chana aka uh, Techno Dad and I, we made this, we recently announced it and I think that this is awesome for one, the person who does have a U-Mic one and is familiar with REW, we've created test tones for that person. But we've also created these test tones for somebody who just wants to listen with their ears. And it really took a long time to figure out different test tones and different methods that we could use where it would make sense for you to listen with your ears and to get a seriously good result. And so there are many CDs out there, many you know discs that claim to be able to help you calibrate and I'm sure that a lot of them are offering some of the same pink noise and generated tones, things like that. The one thing that makes ours different is that ours can access up to 9.1.6 channels. So if you have an Atmos setup, you can actually access your height speakers and your wide speakers. So that is brand new, something that wasn't available before. Also, we constantly update it. So people have been telling us, you know, this, test file needs to be longer. We wish that this one was there. Before the physical disc comes out, we will listen to that feedback and implement it. And after the disc comes out, if there are any changes that we need to make, we can actually just offer the files as a digital download for you folks. So in addition to that, I've also made it so that there's an instruction guide that goes along with the toolkit. So a lot of times you'll get the tools, and you won't exactly know what to do with them. Now, I've spent the time to really just write something out to help people understand how to best utilize some of these test tones the way I use them, and you may figure out some of your own. And I've tried this with my system. I did a complete calibration just with a toolkit, no mic, and I was very surprised with the results. I, of course, would recommend this. This is something we worked hard on, and this right now is $99 and you get the physical disc. This is a pre-order right now. You'll get the physical disc and you'll get immediate access to the digital download. 
So you can't say that this is kind of a sponsored video by sponsored by, uh, by us, I guess. I don't know. But um, yeah, you can get that. Or if you're international and you don't want to pay for the shipping costs, you can just pay the $99 and get the digital download and not have to pay for shipping. So that's why we offer that at the same price. Some people are like, it doesn't make sense. Why would you offer it? It's, it's, that's the reason. So that is my recommendation. I did hear some criticism from a few people that interestingly, they didn't seem to purchase this. I heard one guy say that there were 99 other things that you should buy. He didn't mention any of them, but you know. You're having girl problems, I feel bad for you, son. I got 99 problems, but a bitch ain't one hit me. Next up, my favorite book on sound. It's Sound Reproduction, The Acoustics and Psychoacoustics of Loudspeakers and Rooms by Dr. Floyd Toole. And if you want to improve your listening experience, one way is to really understand acoustics, psychoacoustics, how all of this works together and how we perceive sound. That is going to help you tremendously. And it really changed the way I thought about sound. It really gave me a good understanding. And this book has been around for a while. And a lot of times people try to argue against stuff that was already researched. They've answered a lot of the questions that people have as to, you know, uh, well, you know, just because it measures well doesn't mean that you're going to like it. Well, actually, the research shows that if it measures well on axis and off axis, most people like it. So there is a correlation. And that's a great thing. That's a great thing. That means that we have an idea how to make sound good for most people. Now, there is a subjective aspect. And yeah, that's they mentioned that in the book also. And that's also the reason that in the calibration toolkit, we have uh, an area where you just listen and adjust your bass and treble controls because that is subjective. So this book is, what, 60 bucks? I would recommend getting a digital download version just because it'll be easier to search and reference and highlight later on. The only downside to that is that sometimes there's a photo that you need to reference. So there is the case where a textbook is handy because you can look at the picture, read the text, maybe if it's on a different page, kind of like, you know, kind of fold the page over, whatever you need to do. Uh, it's a little bit harder to do, to do that on a Kindle, but it is easier to search and reference later on. So you got to see what works for you. That's my recommendation. Next recommendation is get a good high quality streaming service. So if you're still using Spotify, which doesn't offer a high resolution lossless version, I would recommend trying something like that. If you're using even, I use YouTube music just because I like the recommendation engine, but it's for when I'm listening to music in the car where I don't really care so much about, you know, the absolute sound quality because there's so much road noise. Or if I'm just doing something around the house and I just need to keep something playing without me interrupting it. But if I'm going to sit there and if I'm going to use something to analyze the music if i you know have my playlist of different tracks that i listen to i want to hear the best possible version of that now for me that is cobas because number one they hook me up and they allow me to use this so shout out to cobas thank you for doing that and i find that it's just a no nonsense kind of deal i don't need to get any extra hardware it just streams versions of kind of like a flac file right? An uncompressed, lossless version of the file. And there's no unfolding or any weird stuff that needs to happen. That's what I like. Another option is maybe something like the Amazon Prime service has lossless music as well as Apple music. So there are other options. Hopefully Spotify comes out with something. I know Tidal does, but that's what I was referencing when I said that, you know, in order to get the best quality, they recommend that you use this hardware, MQA, this and that. I don't I don't know exactly how it works, but it seems too complicated for me. So Cobuzz, if you want to try that out, has high res audio, lossless, and yeah, if you're sitting there listening to the minute details, I think you will notice a difference if you have some nice speakers or listening on headphones. Yeah, it's something that is noticeable and it's a very reasonable price. 
there it is. So the only downside that I would say for Cobuzz is maybe their library is not as extensive as some of the other services. So just find one that works for you. Next up on the list is some tools. So this is a decibel meter and SPL meter and what it's 30 bucks with a 10% coupon. And this will allow you to level match. So this kind of goes along with the calibration toolkit in that some of the test tones are just pink noise that you play with various speakers. You take notes about, you know, how it sounds at your listening position and compare that to the auto calibration from your AVR and see if they match up. Probably will, but just make sure if there's something that may have changed or, you know, you may have moved something and it changed the acoustics. This is a good, easy way and inexpensive way to spot check that. So an SPL meter, 30 bucks. You can also find an SPL meter on, on a phone, but I don't find that those are quite as accurate just because you're limited by the quality of your phone's mic. And that's who knows what that is. Now, for, for just SPL, where it's just sound pressure, you're not doing frequency response, it might be okay. So take a look at some of those apps. In addition to something like this, you may wanna look at something that does a distance measurement. So you can see how far you are from each speaker. And ideal is to have each speaker equidistant. Now, of course, that's not always possible, but it's a good idea to use that when you're setting the distance. So if you're in your AVR and you're looking at the receiver settings, you may find that those settings should be somewhat in the ballpark as far as distance to where your speakers actually are, right? So they might be off because they might be calibrating to the distance of the furthest or the, the, the speaker with the most delay, sometimes that's a sub, but it depends on the system. But generally speaking, if you wanted to do a manual calibration, the good starting point would be the actual distance of the speakers. So something like this would be useful. There are less expensive ones, but this one I thought was kind of cool. Uh, one of our patrons showed me this, Don, thank you. He showed me this because it actually has a way to measure elevation or tilt. So if you're trying to aim your height speakers and you need that 30 degrees or 45 degrees, whatever it is, then you can use something like this to get an idea. Now this does not do azimuth, right? So height elevation is this way. Azimuth would be like zero degrees and then 45 degrees, 90 degrees, right? But there are phone apps to do that, and they're not very expensive. This is one for Android here, Protractor. Um, here's one for iOS. I haven't tried this particular one, but it's a pretty simple thing. They have, you know, compass and GPS sensors, uh, you know, all kinds of things in these phones that allow you to set this to zero. And then when you move it, you can say, okay, that's 45 degrees. It's pretty simple. And what I would recommend for you guys to get the best possible sound is use these apps and place the speakers in accordance to the recommended placement for speakers. So experiment with that and see if maybe some of your speakers are in an optimal location. So one of the recommendations for under $100 is to get some decent IEMs or headphones. Now, the ones that I recommended are tuned to what's called the Harman Target, which is a target curve that is known to give you a perceived accurate frequency response. Some may argue that the bass is a little bit much on there, but generally speaking, people can kind of agree that it's a pretty good target curve. And these are inexpensive IEMs that I actually got for Christmas, and they are pretty excellent. I think that they do a good job of following that Harman target curve, I actually saw Sean Olive from Harman post about these and it's surprising because this is not one of their products, but it is uh, from a, another headphone reviewer, Crenacle, uh, and he partnered up with this company and it's 49 bucks and they sound very good. So that's good just because, you know, if you're listening to something on a computer, I know a lot of stuff is wireless right now, but if you have a laptop or something where you can plug in headphones, maybe a nice... DAC, something like that. You can listen and have a good listening experience. But how this would help you if you have speakers is now you have a point of reference. So let's say for example, you use the spatial audio calibration toolkit and you listen to pink noise with these, 
that's going to be a pretty accurate sound, right? It's following the Harman target. Now, if you listen on the speakers and they sound totally different, let's say if you keep one on, you play the sound on your speakers and it just has a totally different tonality altogether, that might be a hint that something is not tuned correctly. So it can be used as a reference. And so I normally would recommend these AKG K371s, but for some reason they're 168 bucks right now. Normally they're around $109. I've seen them under $100 before. 168 bucks, I wouldn't, I don't, I don't, that's just too much. Not that they're not worth it, it's just that they are usually 100 bucks, so. Anyway, I use these, I have them right here actually. These are the ones I always use. And I think that they are very good as a point of reference. So that's one tip there. And just a bonus tip for you guys is maybe spend that hundred bucks and join something like the Audio Engineering Society, AES. And this is more if you wanna nerd out and really get into some of the white papers about how sound works. There's a lot of people who have done the research and they put their, their information here available to people who are interested. Now, normally you have to pay like $33 to download those, but if you're a member, it's hundred bucks, $95 a year, and you can download all of those white papers and you can actually join the Discord group. And you know, there's some perks there. You can, you can talk to some of these folks. And so that's kind of the bonus tip. If you guys have any recommendations of how you would probably spend a hundred bucks to improve your system, let me know down in the comments below. Is there something I missed? Is there something I got wrong? You guys let me know. Anyway, that is it. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to like, subscribe, ring the bell to be notified when I upload new videos and check out AV Masterclass where I put more of my exclusive videos, my tutorials, things like that, avmasterclass.com. Anyway, that's it. Take care. Bye-bye.